Hello, my name is John McCauley. I'm the Midwest Regional Sales Manager for Ophir Spiracon. And today I'm going to be talking about a very unique feature in our Spiracon beam gauge software that allows you to integrate a real-time laser power or energy measurement into the software at the same time you're taking a beam profile. So let's go ahead and talk about how to set this up first of all. I've got an SP620U beam profiling camera that's attached to an LBS300 which is used for attenuating the beam down to a usable signal. Most of the beam is going to be passing right through that LBS 300. So on the back end of that, I'm going to be capturing the remainder of the laser with a photodiode um, laser power meter that's attached to a, the Ophir Juno PC interface. And that's how we're going to be collecting the data into beam gauge. Before we connect to a power meter, you see the total, the total power being uh, displayed as counts. This is really just an arbitrary number that doesn't mean too much to us yet. It's just basically it tells us how many pixels are being illuminated and, and w at what value they're being illuminated. So when we add the power meter, you will see that value turn to milliwatts. And that is, that is the real-time power measurement. Now, we're not going to be collecting all of the light. Uh, with the PD300. We're only going to be collecting about 96% of it because 4% is going to the beam profile. So we need to tell the, the software that we're collecting only a portion of the light. And that's how we do that here. We enter uh, in this value, since we're only collecting 96%, we hit 96, hit enter, and now that power measurement is calibrated based on that entry. If we go to the results tab, we see a, a real-time power measurement that is taking place. I'm going to block the beam to see how that's affected. You see that value goes away. We bring it back and we've got the power measurement uh, being taken again. We are also, again, simultaneously taking a beam profile at the same time we're taking the power measurement. We can see that in the 2D beam display. What I can also do with this power measurement is chart our uh, result. And how I do that is I go to the results window, I click on the total power, I go down to chart, and this window pops up. I'm going to place it at the bottom of the, the screen to make it a, a little bit more useful. Increase the, the window there. And you can see along the bottom we are actually now charting real-time power as we take our beam profile. Let me block the beam just to show you how that's affected. Beam goes away, so does our power measurement. Beam is coming back, and so does our power measurement. What's useful about this is in order for you to fully understand how the laser is interacting with the process that you're using it for, you need to know the power density. So you need to know how much power the laser is outputting, and you need to know the beam size. Well, you're collecting both of those bits of information within one instance of software. So beam gauge does automatically calculate your power density as you're taking your beam profile and your power measurement. And you see that right under the total power that's being, um, that's being displayed here. And we can see that here in the results window. The total power is about 0.11 milliwatts. The average power density based on the beam size is about 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared being automatically calculated. There will be some instances where you can't take a power measurement and a beam profile at the same time. So in that case, what you should do is take a power measurement before you take a beam profile and enter that value into beam gauge and that will calibrate your data. How you do that is you go to the computations tab. You see in this section of the ribbon, you see power or energy. We're going to take that value, which was 0.11 milliwatts, and hit enter. And now you see the total power, which is based on that entry, is 0.11 milliwatts but we also see the average power density also being calculated based on that, that value as well 
and the beam diameter that's being calculated at the same time. We hope you found this information uh, about beam gauge useful to you and your application of our beam profiling product. If you do have any further questions, you can feel free to contact me or any of my colleagues by calling area code 866-755-5499 or you can find us on the web at www.ophiropt.com slash photonics.